to welcome you all this morning as we celebrate new beginnings, the fact that every day is an opportunity for the Lord to do some amazing things in our lives, and to celebrate the reality of a new year, it's a fresh start. New opportunities to make differences for the Lord in our community and for those that God has put into our lives. To do so, if you advance to the next slide, let's speak together our mission statement. Engage people, connect generations, build relationships in Christ. We engage people. We do not wait for folks to come to us. By our very lives, we reflect the love we have for the Lord in the lives of other people. It's about connecting generations. Look around this room this morning. We have all different generations scattered about. What a blessing. And it's about engage people, connect generations, build relationships in Christ. Building relationships with Jesus and with each other as we share the good news. Several things to share as we get started today. If you haven't already done so, you'll notice in the chair in front of you there's a salmon color, record of fellowship. If you would fill one out for family and as you head out later this morning, place that in the back as you leave. That's just an opportunity for us to stay connected together as God's people. Um, there will be coffee hour after the service, as we've been doing. Um, offerings, you may have wondered. We haven't cast a play here since the start of COVID. The way we do it is there's a box in the back as you came in. You're simply invited to place offerings in that as you come in. Two other things here. Next week, uh, well, actually last fall, we started two new groups as part of our visioning process. A communications in-reach group and an outreach group. We're going to try and get those restarted here with the new year. The communications in-reach group will be meeting next Sunday after service. These are open to anybody who'd like to see us move forward with our vision and mission as a congregation. And then the outreach group is in three weeks on the 29th. You'll be hearing a lot more about this in the days ahead. And also as a quick reminder, um, the service for Cindy Del Bell, it's been a little while, is scheduled for Saturday, February 11th at 11 a.m. Since it's been a while since that's happened, I just want to remind people that is coming, scheduled for February 11th at 11 a.m. That is really all that I have this morning. So I'd invite you to stand as we begin this morning with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you call for us to be focused on the future. It is so easy to get mired in the past, stuck in where we've been. But Lord, when that happens, help us to see that through faith in you, each day is a new beginning, a new opportunity to reflect your love, to live in your love, and to share the good news of Jesus with others. We ask for your blessing as we do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our opening song this morning is, The Lord my God be praised.
our personal brokenness, our weakness and our sin, we lay it at the foot of the cross and receive from there the forgiveness, the life, the fresh start that we need each day as God's children. Let's continue with the invocation. You'll find it either in your service folder or the entire service is also available here in front. In the name of God the Father. Praise to our creating God. In the name of His Son, Jesus. Praise to our redeeming God. In the name of God the Spirit. Praise to our renewing God. Let us join our thankful voices. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. As Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. As a family of loved and redeemed children of God, we lay our sins at the feet of Jesus, seeking his forgiveness and life. As we have a moment of silence to consider our personal brokenness, but the Lord who breaks through and gives us a new start each day. Father in heaven, we come before you in need of healing for our bodies, our souls, and our lives. Sin has infected us to the core. Without you, death is our only prospect. Touch us with your healing hand and restore us. Have mercy on us and give us forgiveness and life in Jesus' name. Moved with pity, God stretches out his hand and touches you. Upon this, your confession, I announce the grace of God to all of you. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, each day is an opportunity, a new start, a time in which you promise to walk with us. Help us to focus on the future that you have prepared in love for each of us. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we now turn our attention to the reading of God's Word. You'll find the lessons for this morning both printed in your service folder, and they're also available here in front. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture lesson, the first lesson for this morning, is from Proverbs. Chapter 16, starting at verse 1. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem sure to them, sure to them, excuse me, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel reading chosen for this morning is from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. As he, Jesus, went along, he saw a man blind from birth. 
His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it in the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed, and he came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. <clears throat> How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our true Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it either in your service folder or also here in front. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare for the children's message by singing the butterfly song.
to invite our children and young ones right up to the front for this morning's children's message. We have a crowd today. All right. Awesome. If we were a ship, we'd be leaning, so I will move this direction. All right. There's a place that I have visited several times. I don't know if any of you know where this might be. What does it look like? It's a cave. It's a cave. This is Carlsbad Caverns. It's a national park in New Mexico out in the middle of nowhere. But this is one way you can get down into the cave. It's the natural entrance. In about a mile, it drops 900 feet back and forth, back and forth. It's really kind of cool because as you go down, you can look around and the light gets smaller and smaller and smaller. <coughs> but here's what I'm going to see when I go in that cave. Now don't ask me whether this is a stalagmite or a stalagmite. I can't keep them straight. One goes up, down, one goes down, and everyone's going, I don't know. Used to know. Huh? They hang on tight, so it's a stalagmite. Thank you, John. That's very, very helpful. You see, you've learned science today, too. Yeah. But one thing I've noticed, and this is the thing about caves, the further down you go into them, the harder it is to see. That light gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And keep... Before long, oftentimes, all you have is a light of a candle or the light of a little headlamp. I have several headlamps I use when I go hiking at night. I know that's something I probably shouldn't do, but I do a lot. Candle provides light. Now, could you imagine living your entire life not being able to see? It's kind of scary. I, I actually know several people who have been blind since birth. And for them, if they've never had it, they learn to work with it. It's a lot more difficult if you once had sight and gradually disappeared over time because it's like that candle going out in a dark place. If you've ever been in a, in a cave with no light, I mean, you can go like this, and you can't see your hand. It is dark. Now, that darkness, that, there was a man in today's story from, uh, in today's reading, excuse me, from John chapter 8, who was born blind. He lived his entire life without being able to see. Now, there's something we can compare that to. It's similar to not knowing Jesus, walking in darkness your entire life, and it's scary. That's why Jesus came into this world, and now that we know him, Ephesians 5 tells us, you were once darkness, in other words, not being able to see the Lord, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We're called to live the life Jesus has given us. And that blind man that, that Jesus came to, he told him, now listen to this, here's what he told him. I'm going to put some mud in your eyes, and I want you to go to a pool and wash that out, and you're going to be able to see. If someone asked you to do that, would you do that? I'd be going, what? I don't think so. But in this case, Jesus told him to do it, and he listened, and he went, and because of that, because he trusted the Lord, I do know one thing, I used to be blind, but now I can see. And God works that miracle in each one of us when we come to faith. He gives us His light so we can see His love in action. Every day, He lights our lives. You know, we say that Jesus is the light of the world, and it's true. He lights our lives every day as we live in Him. So, let's go to our Lord in prayer, and if you would all repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus, thank you for sending Jesus to be the light of the world, to be the light of the world. Light our lives every day, light our lives every day, as we walk in your path, as we walk in your path. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, you can go meet your children's church leader this morning, as we do every week. We'll bring them back once they are done. Thank you, Mike. Let's continue with our next song, which is Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling.
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, 2023 has arrived, and each day is filled with new beginnings. But Lord, there's one thing that we know we need, and that is your work in our lives through your Spirit. Lord, help us look to the future, the future that you have planned out for us, a future that is full of your grace and mercy as you work in our lives. We thank you for that blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it was likely the most stressful day of your life, and you don't even remember it. Up until that moment, life for you was fantastic. All of your needs were met. You didn't have a care in the world. You had no idea... Go back for just a second. <laughs> you had no idea what stress was, and then your world just fell apart. You were forced to leave your home and venture out into the world. Your heart raced rapidly, and then finally you broke down and cried. Now, it was the day you were born. You were forced to leave the warmth and the comfort of your mother's womb. It was a new beginning full of opportunities for you. Life itself is a series of new beginnings. You leave some things behind, literally get pushed out, and venture into the unknown. There are countless new opportunities for each one of us as children of our Lord. Now, the second week of 2023 is a new beginning. Many people I know, and I admit I will put myself in this group, were kind of glad to say goodbye to 2022. They had to deal with significant change or loss in their lives. Some lost their jobs. Others lost some loved ones. Relationships have ended. Some had to deal with some bad doctor's reports. Some of you ventured into the world of retirement. You're still trying to figure out what does that really look like. But each one of those is a brand new beginning in life. So for the next three weeks, including today, we're going to dive into God's Word and see just what does He tell us about all these new beginnings. What guidance does God give to us? We begin this week by understanding that if it truly is a new beginning, we stop focusing on the past. Instead, we look to the future. What opportunities is God going to provide for us? And we do that by focusing on purpose and not on cause. When bad things happen, we tend to focus on cause. Why? Why did this happen? But what we're really looking for is someone or something that we can blame for where we find ourselves. I think we see this crystal clear in the story about Jesus and the man who was born blind from John chapter 9. It said this, as Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, look at this question, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Oh, ouch. You know, back in Jesus' day, it was believed that any illness or debilitating injury that you were dealing with could be somehow traced to a specific sinful behavior. This was punishment for something from the past. And the disciples were absolutely perplexed because this man had been born blind. What's the deal? Is this in anticipation of something sinful this man would do later in life? Or did his parents do something so awful, so hideous, that their son would be born with this? They were looking for a cause. Do we blame him or his parents? You see, we love to look for a cause and someone or something to blame when life goes sideways. Well, I lost my job because my boss just had it in for me. 
those silly politicians, that's all the further I'm going politics, <laughs> ruined the economy so everything crashed and then my job was eliminated. You get a bad report from the doctor. I just should have taken better care of myself. I think I've said that a few times in the last year. A relationship ends. Well, he never put anything into it. And the list just goes on from there. So how much time and worry have we wasted looking for a cause, and here's the key, that will make no difference to the place you find yourself in today? I understand you don't want to repeat the mistakes of your past. I also understand that finding closure is critical. But at some point, you have to let it go. Instead, you focus on the purpose, not why, but what. What is God going to do with this? And how does this fit into God's plan? So let's go back to the man who was born blind. Jesus answered his disciples, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. In other words, Jesus is saying, uh, you guys have it all wrong. This is not a punishment for some sin made by this man or his parents. God is going to use this moment. In fact, this man was born for this very moment. Jesus is going to heal him. He's going to be able to see. People will then see Jesus as someone pretty special. Some will even see him as the Savior, the Son of God who can bring sight to the blind. God would use this man for that very purpose. And thousands of years later, God is still using that man and what happened in his life. God used that moment in time to help others recognize Jesus as the Son of God. Now, unfortunately, that man doesn't know that. He likely did not find out until he got home to heaven. And then he saw God's plan and purpose unfolded for him. So what's the point? Instead of searching for a cause and blaming someone or something for what's happening to us, we ask the what question. What could God be doing here? What might be the purpose behind what God is doing? I go back to Romans 8.28 from our text today. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. God does not say here that good things will always happen to you. He does say, though, that whether we see it as a good thing, a bad thing, or even an evil thing, God can, in his own time and way, turn it around and use it in your life. In other words, I've said this before, everything we go through in life, even though we may not understand it, does have a point and a purpose. Even if it appears to be nothing but pure, ugly evil at the time, somehow, we may not know until we get to heaven, God can turn it around to fulfill His plan in the long run. And then we focus on the possibilities the future may have for us and what God might just do instead of the probabilities of what we think might happen. Probabilities can hold people back. You think you know how something is going to turn out, and it's usually not good, and you don't even bother to consider what God might just have in mind. Let's go back to the blind man again. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it in the man's eyes, and then he told him to go wash it in the pool of Siloam. Now remember, this man has been blind since birth. At that moment, he has a choice. He could live in the world of probability, or he could take a chance on the world of possibility. The world of probability would tell him this. Okay, he was born blind. He woke up this morning blind. He's probably going to wake up tomorrow blind as well. 
Just because some guy who happened to be walking by put some mud in his eyes and told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, that doesn't make it very likely that anything's going to change. The probability is that he's not going to eat that night because he's given up his begging spot. He's likely going to waste his time going to a pool to wash out his eyes. You see, probability focuses on what you can't do and not on what God can do. It goes like this. These treatments probably aren't going to work. Why should I continue? I'm probably not going to get any better. Or, I don't think we can put this relationship back together. There's just too much water under the bridge. Or, at my age, how am I ever going to find another job? That is the world of probability. It focuses on what we can do and does not focus on what God can do. The possibilities? Those are God's specialty. This blind man decides to live in the world of possibility. Okay, maybe something can happen here. So in obedience to Jesus and what he tells him to do, he goes to the pool of Siloam. He washes his eyes, and now he can see for the very first time in his life. Now, please do not misunderstand me. I'm not going all Joel Osteen on you. I am not saying as long as you think positive and have the right attitude, God is going to work it all out right now. That's not what I'm saying. But could God have different plans and work it out in a miracle? Absolutely. But does that mean that you stop medications and treatments? Maybe God's healing you through them. Should we dump all of our savings? Well, God might be well taking care of you through your savings. The point is we can have a different perspective. What is God doing here? Is he opening a door that I'm somehow missing because I'm only focusing inward? Is God trying to strengthen me? Is he trying to teach me something? Remember, what is impossible with man is possible with God. We focus on possibilities, not probabilities. And then we focus on what we know to be fact, not on the unknowns. Unknowns are limitless, aren't they? We don't know what this afternoon is going to bring us. We may think we do. How about the economy? The people around us? You know, that could all change at any minute. It does no good to focus on what we do not know. Instead, we build on what we do know. So, this man who was born blind is now walking around He's commenting on the buildings and how beautiful the blue sky is. Now, everyone in that town knew he'd been blind from birth. Everyone. What just happened here? It caused a major stir. Oh, and then the religious leaders caught wind of it. And when they hear Jesus did this, oof, they were up in arms. They just don't like him. So later in John 9, they'll go to the blind man first. Were you really blind? Well, let's talk to his parents to vouch for the fact that he was blind. And when that doesn't work, they end up talking with Jesus. Uh-oh, he healed on the Sabbath. That makes him a sinner. So they go right back to the once blind man and eventually kick him out of the synagogue. But listen to how the once blind man answers them. Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. You guys keep hurling accusations at Jesus, at me, even at my parents. I don't know about that stuff. But here's what I do know. When I woke up this morning, I was blind. Right now, I can see you just fine. He focused in on what he knew. You and I can focus in on what we know and build on. Something that is rock solid. What might that be? God's word has promises you can build on. 
It is the gospel truth. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also, along with him, freely give us all things? What do we know? We have a Father in heaven who has an incredible, unconditional, and unending love for you and for me. He desperately wants to have a relationship with each one of us. In fact, he would not hold back his son from death for you. The only way that we could be restored to our Heavenly Father was for Jesus to be sent into this broken world. We were blind by our sin. We could not seek God out because of that sin. So God had to come to us so that we could see Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Although he was innocent, he became guilty. Not his guilt, your guilt. My guilt. He paid the price of our sin. He died in your place only to live again and say through faith in him, you are forgiven. So even though you and I are sinners, God through Jesus declares us to be saints. That is what we know. God is giving you new life in this world and the promise of eternal life with him. And we can take that promise of God to the bank. Paul was one step further. He said, if he did all that, what would he not do for you? We can trust his promises. When times become difficult and we face junk that we just don't understand, we have a God we can trust. That's what we know and that is what we focus on. Life is a series of new beginnings. First step in that new beginning is to get a vision for the future. We focus on the purpose, not the cause. P possibilities and not probabilities. What we do know, and what we don't know, it's all laid out in John 9. And best of all, Jesus has each of us and our futures firmly in his loving hands. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's continue with our next song, which is In Christ Alone.
I invite you to stand as we take those things that are on our hearts and on our minds this morning to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we focus on the future, the blessings, the promises that you have for us, things that you kept, you keep for us through faith in Jesus. Although we don't know what the future holds, we certainly know who holds the future, and that's you, and we give you thanks for that. And there are a number of things we bring before you this morning. We give you thanks for Marie, that she is doing better and um, with following a surgery. That's the niece of Carol Thompson. We give you praise for good, clear roads in most places. We give you thanks. We're asked that you would be with Justin, Lisa, Con Lisa, Connor, and Kaya, that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We give you thanks that Howard's radiation treatments ended last Friday. We pray for ongoing good results. We pray for Anne McLean's daughter, who will be undergoing surgery this week, that you would be with the doctors and nurses as they work with her, and that healing would result as a result of this. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all those who are sick or hospitalized. They're dealing with ongoing treatments for cancer, depression, for substance abuse issues, that you would be with the homeless, especially in these harsh winter months that we've been experiencing a little earlier than usual this year. We give you thanks for the gift of caregivers who make a difference in the lives of those who are struggling. We pray you'd be with those caught in the middle of the situation in the Ukraine, that you would restore peace in a broken area, an area of the world where there's intense fighting going on, and restore peace in due time. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon the restart of our vision group starting next week here at Christ our Redeemer, that we would be future looking to the blessings that you have in mind, not just for this congregation and its people, but this community, the very people we are called to reach out to. We ask that you would be with Christ our Redeemer, our little lambs, preschool, pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, and that you would bless the students, teachers, staff, everyone who works to raise these young ones in the love of our Lord Jesus. For our adult Bible classes, our children's church, the intentional outreach that we are making in, in this community, that they would all be blessed by your spirit and make a difference that can have an eternal implication in the lives of many people. All these prayers we bring before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal, he was looking to the future. He knew what awaited him a cross, a tomb, but he also knew that that tomb would be empty following his resurrection. And as Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples, they remembered how with the blood on the doorpost, the angel of death had passed over God's people, and that now this was his supper, his body and his blood, that he would walk with us daily as we realize we are children of God as we receive his body and his blood. As we prepare to receive it, we join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be 
seated as we receive this gift of our Lord's Supper. As we've been doing, you'll be uh, brought up right side first to receive the bread from Pray. I will hand out the wine and we'll have the basket. There it is, the basket at the end. You can place your cup in. Then we'll do the same on the left side. As we're receiving it, we'll join together in singing your table I approach. Let's receive this gift of our Lord's blessing.
remain seated as we go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, for this rich, amazing gift of your love, we give you our thanks and praise. Lord, walk with us as we move into the future with confidence, knowing that you walk with us through every step we take each day. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. We receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give each of you his peace. Amen. A few quick things. Oh, yes, thanks for the reminder. We found a bag, no, glasses out there. A pair of glasses that was out in the snow. They could have been there for three weeks, but who knows? Uh, but anyway, if you think you have lost a pair of glasses, go talk to Ted in the back. He has a pair that was found out in the parking lot this morning. So if you think, well, what happened? He has it. Um, another thing this morning, we do need to move chairs in a bit. However, the front three rows stay up because we're having our first confirmation retreat of the year. Normally, we would start this in September. But of course, as many of you know, due to my two heart surgeries and then New Zealand, I could not get it going prior to that. So um, anyway, we are getting confirmation retreats started about four months later than usual. We're going to make it work out. Have a class, it looks like, of nine students. So a good-sized group this year. Possibly ten, but I'm still working on one. So it's going to be nine for sure. I know we only have seven today because two of them are out of town. But, um, so you'll also notice the lunch getting set up. The way we do the retreats is we start with the lunch and then we move right into the materials. So if we could leave the front three rows up and also I'll ask if we get some tables in the back put in each row to, to get things started. I normally do not like using straight rows and desks. That brings back bad memories for me. <laughs> but due to the size of this class, that room is too small. So that's the way we're going to have to do this. But I am thrilled to be able to get this going again. Um, yeah, a new year, new start. We look to the future as God leads us. Don't forget about coffee hour. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be